It's the dictionary. Dictionary. It's the 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 dictionary. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to another episode of the dictionary. I am so happy that you are here, and I am also happy to say that coming up very soon, you will be getting at least two episodes with guests. Uh, Let's see, this episode is airing in March. Later in March, there will be a wonderful guest. And then in April, there will be another wonderful guest. So come on back. Come just swing around and come say hi. Let's do it. All right, the first word in this episode is eschatology. Now, it has been a few days since I recorded the previous episode. Uh, What is today? I'm, I'm recording this after work. February 13th, 4.18 p.m. Uh, So the previous word, the last word in the previous episode was eschatological, uh, which was related to eschatology, all about that. So eschatology, E-S-C-H-A-T-O-L-O-G-Y. This is a noun from 1844, number one. A branch of theology, so that's all about the the gods and religion and spirituality and all that stuff. A branch of theology concerned with the final events in the history of the world or of humankind. What? (laughs) How do you even study this? This hasn't happened yet. The end of the world or the end of humankind hasn't happened So what are you studying? You are theorizing. You're thinking of ideas of how the world could end. Could you imagine that being your job? Or something that you do in your free time? I mean, I I kind of do this in my free time. Thinking about, hmm, how's everybody gonna die? How's the world gonna die? Well, scientifically, we know that at a certain point in history billions of years from now, the sun is going to die. It's going to be a very slow, gradual death. And I think the earth will be gone before the sun officially dies. But at the very least, we know that the sun's death is going to just pretty much destroy earth, especially anything living on it, if there's anything living on it at that point anymore. Uh, So we know that that's going to happen and we can, we have a pretty good idea of how many billions of years in the future that's going to happen. But, you know, there's a lot of other factors. There's a lot of other things we don't know, like, is there a a big comet or meteor or something that's going to smack into Earth? That could happen. That could happen. Um, Also, just humankind, living kind, anything that's alive. Uh, So that meteor coming down could destroy all the living things, just like with the dinosaurs. It wasn't everything, but it was a lot of stuff. Um, Or, you know, could humans possibly sort of accidentally take themselves out with climate change or nuclear war or all these fun things to talk about? Yeah, so eschatology is thinking about all that stuff and more. There's other ways that this could happen. Uh, number two for eschatology, this is uh, this is a bigger one uh, in terms of amount of words. A belief concerning death, the end of the world, or the ultimate destiny of humankind. Specifically, any of various Christian doctrines concerning the second coming, the resurrection of the dead... Or the last judgment. And of course, as if you are a regular listener, which probably most of you are, there's not a lot of you, so most of you are probably regular. Um, I, I don't know so much about the uh, the Bible and what the Christians have to say about things, and so, you know, I don't know as much. But, you know, I've heard of the second coming. I've heard that people think that Jesus Christ is going to come again and, what, save everybody? What's the point? Why is he going to come back? Is he going to come back? Did he really exist in the first place like you think he did? Nah. Um, the resurrection of the dead. Now, that's a fun one. Do people really think that the dead are going to be resurrected? 
And what was this last one? The Last Judgment. I mean, I don't know exactly what people think that is. Is that the, um, when everybody flies up into heaven, uh, the final judgment, everybody's finally judged. You go up, you go down. Is that going to happen? I don't know. But, you know, all those things are related to death of the of humans, the end of the world, uh, all those things. What is the ultimate destiny of humankind? We can talk about it all. We can all be eschatologists. This word is from the Greek eschatos, which means last or farthest. I feel like there should be a little bit more information there, like what? Uh, but yes, it's studying the furthest thing possible that humans can experience. The end of humankind, the end of Earth. What's the last thing that we can be aware of? Let's study that. What? Let's theorize what that could be. It's an, definitely an interesting topic. Uh, okay, sound effect is going to be not at all related to the end of the world. What, what, that would just be a big explosion, possibly. Could be lots of things. I'm just going to go boo 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 The next word is ischeet. You can pronounce it uh, with an is or an ish at the beginning. Ischeet or ischeet. It's subtle. It's a subtle difference, but it's there. Uh, it's just the word cheat with es at the beginning. First form, noun from the 14th century. Number one, is cheated property is is cheat, and uh, I guess we'll learn about that in the second form. Uh, number two a is the reversion of lands in English feudal law to the lord of the fee. I think I need to read that one again. The reversion of lands in English feudal law to the lord of the fee. The lord of the fee? Uh, when there are no heirs capable of inheriting under the original grant. So this original thing said uh, you got to pass this along to an heir, to a child. But if there are none, then this land, when you are dead and you have no heirs, then I guess this land reverts back to the lord of that area this of the fee part was confusing me reversion of lands in english feudal law to the lord of the fee the lord of the fee is that their name no i don't think so i've heard of the lord of the dance the lord of the rings okay uh two two b uh this is the reversion of property to the crown in england or to the state in the U.S. where there are no legal heirs. So it's the same idea. This one's just a little bit different, uh, specifically to the crown, whoever. Has, so what? If, if you lose your land in England, then the king or queen owns it now? Is that how this works? I, I don't know. Also, this in the state in the U.S., this, this must not be a thing anymore. This is from the 14th century. I have never heard of this. I don't think that, that, you know, now it's like you, because you probably have a mortgage, then it goes back to the bank. Or if you don't have a mortgage, then you just sell it. Or your estate, somebody sells it for you after you die if you don't have any heirs. I don't have any heirs. My cats aren't going to take care of this stuff when I go. They're probably going to go before me anyway. So I got to figure out who's going to deal with this stuff when I go. Let's see. That's it for that one. Let's look at the etymology. It's uh, Anglo-French, eschet, which means reversion of property. Also from escher, which means to fall or devolve. Um, and uh, let's see, Latin, cadere, which means to fall. Uh, yeah, there's more at the word chance. So that's, it's just, it's falling back into the hands of, of, I guess, the person who owned it previously. Maybe you bought this land from the Lord, from the queen, the king, the the crown, uh, or the, the, the state that you live in, the U.S. state. Escheat. Okay, well, what's the second form? boo ba dee ba boo The second form is a verb from the 14th century, uh, starting with transitive. To cause, to revert, by escheat. 
you're causing it to revert. When you go and you have no heirs, you are is cheating your property. Intransitive is to revert by is cheat. I got nothing else. Is cheatable is an adjective. That property, that land is is cheatable. Never heard of this word before. You know what some other words? I've not heard of some of these words in this episode. Like this one, this next one. boo 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 Have I heard of this one? Uh, yes, yes. And it can be pronounced a variety of ways. A shoe. A shoe. Bless you. Um, and both of those, you can uh, say the beginning as a or i. Eshu, eshu, eschu, eschu. And then also, and I think this is the one that probably more most people say, possibly, it is eschu, eschu. It is spelled E-S-C-H-E-W, eschu. Uh, this is a verb from the 14th century. Uh, it looks like it's just transitive, which is to avoid habitually especially on moral or practical grounds. And the synonym is shun. Another synonym, don't know why they separated them. Uh, it's the word escape. So escaping, shunning, uh, you are avoiding this thing over and over again, habitually, um, because you, because on practical grounds, moral grounds, because you don't think it's right, because you don't think it's smart for whatever reason, um, hmm. Uh, eschew. I wish they gave an example here. Um, eschewal or ischewal or ischewal with an A-L. Uh, that's a noun. But what does the etymology say? Um, well, we're taking it down to Old High German. Schuhen. Don't know how to pronounce that. Uh, which means to frighten off. And there's more at the word shy. Um, yeah, uh, this is not a word that I have in my vocabulary or a word that I use. I am aware of it. I would know what it means in context if somebody said it to me. Um, but it's not one that I think that I would use off the top of my head. Um, but I, let's see, like, oh yeah, I, I, I askew, I eschew that. I, I don't want to deal with that. I, I sh shy, shun, shun it away. I'm shunning it away because I don't want to deal with that. Um, water. Some people eschew, eschew water. Why? Because they don't like the taste? Water is the thing that you should probably be having. That's the one liquid that you should always be having. If you want to add some other ones, that's fine. But that should be your base level liquid. I think. I mean, scientifically, the scientists say it too. Um, that's eschew. That's how I like to say that word. I'm so sorry if it's if you if it feels wrong to your ears. Boo -ba -doo -ba -doo -boo 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 -boo. Next is escalar. Escalar. E S C O L A R. This is a noun from circa 1890. This is a large, widely distributed, rough-scaled, scombroid fish that resembles a mackerel. So if you know what a mackerel looks like, because I sure don't. I don't know. I couldn't tell one fish from an... I know a couple of fishes. I know a goldfish. I know a goldfish named Joe. I know I know a catfish. Um, I know a few fishes. But I don't know what the mackerel looks like. But this one, this escalar, looks like a mackerel. Um, it is widely distributed, maybe all over the world. I don't know. Uh, it's large. It has rough scales, so don't pet it backwards, because scales go one direction. Don't pet it. It might, may, maybe it'll cut you. Uh, and then um, it is a scum. A scombroid fish. I don't know what scombroid means. I can't wait until we get to the SC section. Um, and the species name is, let's see if Spencer can say this, Lepidosibium flavobrudinium. I think that was close enough. Very close. Uh, this is a Spanish word. It literally means scholar, like somebody who is reading the books and getting very smart. That's me. 
um, from the Middle Latin, scholaris, and there's more at the word scholar. So, this what is this? Is this fish reading books? I need to see a picture of this fish, by the way. Maybe maybe we'll put it on the social media uh, so we can see what it looks like. Oh, that looks like a mackerel. What I'm very curious about this etymology. Why would you call it? Uh, why would you name it after scholar? Uh, let's see. Is there anything that Spencer can skim real fast? Uh, it's named other things in other places. Um, hmm. Yeah, I don't know about that one, scholar. So, uh, it's just a smart fish. We know that. Now, this article says this is the world's most dangerous fish. Dangerous fish. Why succulent? Yeah, don't. It's about about eating it, I guess. Boo, 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 boo. The next word is escort. We're emphasizing the S. Escort. Um, because this is the first form. We're gonna we're gonna change up the pronunciation a little bit in the second form. Uh, this one is a noun from 1579. 1A1. A person or group of persons accompanying another to give protection or as a courtesy. Oh, well, it was so courteous. Curtis, it was so cur courteous of you to walk me home at night. Thank you for being my escort. Oh, there's a whole group of you. I must need a lot of protection. You guys are just surrounded me so nobody can see me or touch me or bother me in any way. That's a good escort. Uh, 1A2 is the man who goes... I feel like this is a weird way to start a definition, but that in terms of just what I've seen in the book. The man who goes on a date with a woman. Okay. Well, I feel like this could be updated because maybe the woman is ex escorting the man. Maybe there are two men. Maybe there are two women. Maybe they don't have genders. Maybe it's a situation that we can't even think up, think up. Somebody is escorting. Now, obviously, we have to say that this is this is based on, you know, older societies and cultures. Uh, so the, maybe maybe the man couldn't let the woman go out on her own. Maybe for whatever reason in that society, she she couldn't be out on her own. It was looked down upon. Maybe it wasn't safe. And so the man had to escort her because, you know, the man, he, he can protect against anything because he's a man. What else does escort have to say? 1B, a protective screen of warships or fighter planes or a single ship or plane used to fend off enemy attack from one or more vulnerable craft. It's a protective screen of warships or fire planes. So it's not literally a screen. Uh, with a mesh screen isn't going to stop people from attacking you. This is, this is a whole bunch of ships out there in the water or a bunch of planes flying in the sky. Uh, they're escorting you because if you've got some precious cargo on your ship or plane... Uh, then you need some people to protect you. It's similar to when you're walking down the street and you need some people to protect you, one or more people. A lot of celebrities probably have escorts, uh, and so they can have some protection because, you know, people who like celebrities can go a little bit extreme in their love for the celebrities, so they need an escort. They need somebody to, uh, a bodyguard. Uh, so yeah, similar ships and planes, they need escorts. Uh, number two is accompaniment by a person or an armed protector as a ship. The accompaniment by the protector is the escort. This word is from Middle French, Italian, scorgere, which means to guide. So yes, guiding them around. Um, anything else that's interesting from uh, the ex Latin, the X prefix plus corregere, which means to make straight or correct. That's interesting. There's more at the word correct. So you are making a situation straight and correct and right and not entirely sure, but that's pretty old. So 
it evolved over time. Yeah, interesting one. Boop, 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 dee, dee, boo. The second form of escort is a transitive verb from 1708. Now, this one, you can pronounce this escort, escort, or escort. You can emphasize either syllable, and the first syllable is is or s. Uh, escort, that's how, well, that was extra emphasized. Uh, it's a verb, so yeah, I'd say es escort, escort, escort. Uh oh, the brain is doesn't know what to do with this word anymore. This is to accompany as an escort. Please let me escort you. Can I be your escort? I I can only say it one way, escort, escort. We're gonna. I'm gonna go do some escort. Yeah, whatever. Uh, yes, it's the action of escorting. The next word is escot. E-S-C-O-T. Transitive verb from 1602. Uh, this one is obsolete, which is no surprise to me because I have never heard of this word. Escot. Uh, this um, just has a couple of synonyms, which are support and maintain support and maintain how would you use this in context maybe the etymology will help this is from the anglo-french escot maybe they say esco or echo because they don't like s's uh, that means contribution it is also of germanic origin akin to the old norse scot with a k and that also means contribution or shot Hmm, like, I'm going to give it my best shot. I'm going to contribute to that thing. I'm going to throw in my shot. I got my shot. Here's my shot. Pew, pew. Um, yeah, shot, contribution, support, maintain. So you're you're just adding in your, your two cents. You're, you're contributing what you can. Um, and that's an escot? Yeah, it's obsolete. Somehow it just... Let's, let's look at the Google... Uh, because what Google will do, it will it, it will tell me um, like when when were the words being used. Now where can we where will it show me this uh, this like oh it used to be used uh, 400 years ago but not so much. And we, why aren't you showing me the chart? I want to see the chart of this of this word. Ah, here we go. <laughs> the trends of Escott. Um, it's very low. It's very low. There's a little bit between, um, maybe 1780. Um, there's like, that's the highest part for maybe 10 years or so. And then it goes down. It goes up a little bit around 1820. Uh, it dips down to the bottom for a while. It goes up and down just a little bit for a while. Has a, has a nice long stretch of almost no usage until the 1950 and then that's about it yeah even even then when it was popular it wasn't popular this this word was never popular popular okay let's say another word here we go with escritoire this seems french escritoire e s c r i T O I R E, escritoire, noun from 1664. This is a writing table or desk. Specifically, the 4B definition for the word secretary. Now, a lot of you young people might think, oh, well, a secretary is a person who's supposed to take notes and write up things and do all the that's fun stuff. But it's also just called a desk. It's a, it's a desk. I think that's where the human secretary got their name from, was from go sit at the secretary and do some work. It's just a desk. It's a place to write stuff. Uh, this, yes, it's from the obsolete French, escritoire, which means writing desk or scriptorium. Oh, if I ever write a script, I will have written it at a scriptorium. I did not know that this word existed. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Escritoire. It's all about writing at a place. Next is escrow. 
you can also emphasize the second syllable, escrow. First form, noun from 1594. I have heard about this word for a long, long time. And even I, as a homeowner, uh, uh, an owner of property, it's just a condo, it's just a little condo, uh, I still don't understand what this is because I don't have to deal with it on a day-to-day -day basis. I don't even know if I have anything in escrow. I don't think I do. So what is it? Number one, a deed, a bond, money, or a piece of property held in trust by a third party to be turned over to the grantee only upon fulfillment of a condition. So it's like you, um, I want to buy this thing. So I'm going to give you this thing. Maybe you're the bank, maybe you're a company, whatever you are. I'm going to give you this thing. You're going to hold on to it. You kind of own it, right? If it's a bond or if it's a deed, you own it until I do something. If I pay off enough of my mortgage or pay off my mortgage completely, whatever the condition is, once I do that thing, then you give me the deed, whatever it is. It's been held in escrow. That's what they say. They say these things. I don't know all what they mean, but they say these things. Um, and then number two is a fund or deposit designed to serve as an escrow. So you have deposited something, it's being held somewhere, and I guess you would get that back if you do something fancy. Do a little dance. Uh, let's see. Uh, S in escrow, that's the phrase. Here we go. This means in trust as an escrow. Now, this is, uh, this is like that legal thing where you put something in a trust, right? I think that's what we're talking about here. When you put it in a trust, I don't know what that means exactly, even though I have helped to put a thing into a trust. It's like a, it's like a, it's just this weird legal thing that exists. And it's like, it, you can't touch it. It may be, it, maybe it's not as taxable. I don't know. We'll talk about the trust in the T's. We'll get to learn all about that. Maybe I'll have a lawyer on for that episode so they can explain, explain trusts. Now that's going to be a long time from now. We should probably learn about it before then but I don't know of any place in the dictionary where we would. You're just going to have to wait. So in trust is, no, in escrow is in trust as an escrow, as in the example, had 10, no, had $1,000 in escrow to pay taxes. So what does this mean? That you can use that $1,000 to pay your taxes? Or do you get the 1000 once you pay your taxes? I don't really know how this works. Hope I never have to deal with this. Uh, let's see. Oh, this is from the Anglo-French escrew, which means scroll. Like a scroll. Back in the day, they used to keep all their notes on a scroll, just a long piece of paper that they would scroll up on this cylinder and scroll down from that cylinder. And that's probably where they kept all this information on the scroll. So that's what it is. Hmm. Okay. The next word is the second form of escrow. You can emphasize either syllable. This is a transitive verb from 1946, and it is to place in escrow. I'm going to escrow my stuff so then I can get it back later when I do some cool stuff. I like my stuff. Please. Beep, beep, boop, boop, bitty, bitty, boop. The next word is escudo. Yeah, escudo. E-S-C-U-D-O. Noun from circa 1821. Number one, any of various former gold or silver coins of Hispanic countries. They called them escudo or escudos with an S. Number two A, the basic monetary unit of Portugal from 1910 to 2001. Did what happened in 2001? Did Portugal get added to the European Union and then they're on the, or are, were they already part of the European Union? And then in 2001, did they go to the Euro? I should probably know when the Euro came to be. When Euro, let's just, let's just put in two words. Yeah, well, when Euro started, here we go. 1999. January 1st, 1999 was when it was launched 
but I'm guessing, yeah, it says coins and banknotes were launched in 2002, and in 12 EU countries, the biggest cash changeover in history took place. So 2002, so maybe, maybe Portugal went to the euro in 2001, or they just they just decided to change their money. They were like, you know what, it's time. It's time we change from the Escudo to something else. You're just going to have to find out what that is someday. Um, one, no, 2B says just go see the money table. Go to the money table so you can learn more about Escudo. And number three is the basic monetary unit of Chile from 1960 to 1975. So Chile had it for 15 years and Portugal had it for ooh, 91 years. Portugal was using the Escudo. Um, and it sounds like other um, Hispanic countries, according to the dictionary, other Hispanic countries were using the Escudo at some point or still do? Former. No, it says former. Gold and silver coins. Nobody uses it anymore, I guess. Uh, this is a Spanish and Portuguese word, and it literally means shield. So they probably stamped shields on them. Uh, let's see. I think that is it for Escudo. So we are going to now go to the last word in this episode. Beep, beep, boo, doop, boop, beep, boo. We have the word esculent. Esculent. E S C U L E N T. Adjective from 1626. And the synonym is the word edible. Um, and esculent is also a noun. So. If this is an adjective, you would describe something as edible or esculent. Um, I have lots of things here that are not esculent. I have some things further over there that are esculent. I can't reach them. Otherwise, I would eat them to prove to you. Um, but this is an easy thing. These headphones are not esculent. These, you, you, you technically maybe could eat them. But they're not meant to be eaten, and you might get sick, and you know, they're headphones, so they might get all messed up in your system and then get all tangled up, and then that's a problem. That's a big problem. So, esculent is just edible. And the etymology says we can learn this because uh, this is from the Latin esculentus, which is from the word esca, which means food, from edere, which means to eat, and there's more at the word eat. They are things that can be eaten. And obviously, we should bring this word back. We should say, um, uh, we should say that this, this food is esculent. Or if it's not, then, then ooh, this, 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 was, this was inedible. This was unesculent. Inesculent? What would be the opposite? Don't eat it. That's it. That's it for all of the words. We read them all, and we will 100% remember every single one of these, especially the ones that are archaic or obsolete. But now we have to pick a word of the episode. So today we had eschatology, escheat, escheat, eschew. It's a fun word to say. Escalar, escort, escort, escot, uh, escritoire, escrow, escrow, Escudo and uh, esculent. Hmm. What am I leaning towards? I'm I'm th I'm I'm tempted. I'm tempted to pick eschatology because it sounds like an interesting thing to think about and talk about. And I do think about these things sometimes. Um, anything else? Um, <laughs> not really. Not really. Yeah. Let's just pick eschatology. When I'm studying eschatology, I'm thinking about how everything's gonna end. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, I should have ended the yes sooner. That's fine. What a great song. Uh, okay, now I'm going to tell you about a movie that I watched. Um, Driving Madeline. That's the next one on the list. This is a French movie. Um, who, how much do I want to say? It's, it's a very sweet movie overall. There are some hard things to watch. Um, it's about an elderly woman who is basically telling the story of her life through driving around Paris with a driver. And that's all you need to know. And it's a great movie. 
This is the end of the episode. This is the end of the episode. This is the end of the episode. Uh, my name is Spencer, and this has been Spencer dispensing information. Goodbye.